What's up everyone? John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo here with a full review of one of the most anticipated phones of the year. This is the Behemoth Galaxy Note 2. It packs a lot of punch in its giant 5.5 inch frame. It's got quad core, it's got LTE and all the other goodness you'd expect from a modern super phone. Let's go ahead and check it out and see if it lives up to the hype. So we've broken up this review into six parts. We're gonna cover call quality, hardware, software, fragmentation, size, and eventually come to a conclusion and a one to 10 Techno Buffalo score. So let's begin with call quality. If it doesn't make good phone calls, no matter what else it can do, it's not gonna be of much use to you. The phone offers great call quality, and it sounds like Samsung has made huge improvements over the original Galaxy Note. I felt that at times it was hard to listen to callers on the other end of the original Note, but with the Note 2, I made a call at a very loud restaurant and I could hear just fine. Our mobile editor, Brandon Russell, was on the other end of the call and I didn't hear much background noise. Reception appears to be fairly decent as well. I live in an area that has some coverage issues, but I took phone calls without any of them dropping. The oddity that I experienced on the iPhone 5, the one second delay between when I answered and the person could hear me, uh, appears to be gone on the Note 2. Speakerphone is also loud and clear, as you'd expect from a phone that big. That's a feature that phone manufacturers seem to ignore from time to time. So you'd be able to make great phone calls on the Note. Let's go ahead and talk about hardware, and this thing packs a huge amount of punch. The phone is made of plastic, as of most Samsung phones of the past couple years, and that's kind of a bummer. But it's just a material Samsung a lot of other manufacturers use to build phones, and I don't think they're going to be going away from it anytime soon. That being said, the quality of the build is drastically improved over the original Note. It also feels and looks like the Galaxy S3, and includes a same hardware home button that is just bigger. So I really like the design of the Galaxy S3 and I think Samsung was pretty smart to stick with it. Consumers like familiarity and people buy things they're used to seeing. In terms of build quality and durability, having used both the S3 and the original Note extensively, I believe the Note 2 will hold up a lot better than the original. The S3 and the Note both offer high gloss finishes with a replaceable back panel, so you don't have to worry about scratching. Since it's replaceable, you can always buy another one. I will say, however, the previous Note's back panel was quite flimsy and easily showed wear on its back after a couple months of use. It looks great visually, especially as the chromatic flare of titanium gray model has. It also feels nice in your hands with its rounded corners. With a 5.5 inch display fablet in your pocket, you're gonna have to deal with a bit of weight. The phone is definitely heavier than the iPhone 5, 3.96 ounces, but at 6.4 ounces, it packs a lot of size, speed, and battery. You can dispute the usefulness of TouchWiz and whether or not the S Pen is a useful tool or not, but it's really hard to deny how clear and beautiful the 5.5 inch HD Super AMOLED display is. With a 1280 by 720 resolution and a 267 PPI, the pixel density is lower than the iPhone 5 screen, 326 PPI, but it's still absolutely gorgeous. The Note 2 also packs a sturdier and less shatter-prone Corning Gorilla Glass 2 display. The device is pretty ready to take a few rounds of drops, slips, and hits, but don't recommend exposing it to any of those risks. One thing you have to contend with is how to handle such a massive screen. Samsung, as it did with the previous Note, gives you the option of one-handed shortcuts to help you use the device without both hands. One-handed operation gives you modes with virtual keyboards and ability to unlock with just one hand. All right, let's talk about processor. This thing is an absolute screamer. It's rocking Samsung's own 1.6 gigahertz Exynos 4412 quad-core processor, and this thing does not disappoint. Pages and apps load quickly. We played through video games, a little bad piggies and frontline commando, and I ran through them with quick load times and appreciated the awesome graphics performance. We ran the phone through a ton of different benchmarks. All of those are going to be in the link down below and you can check them out on our written review. So with the phone this big and a quad core processor and LTE, there's bound to be some battery drain. Let's talk about battery life. A device with as much processing power and display needs an equally impressive battery. Samsung added a whopping 3100 milliamp hour lithium ion battery. The number might not mean much to most, but it basically translates to really awesome battery life. For comparison's sake, the iPhone 5 is allegedly a 1,440 milliamp hour battery, and the Droid Razor Max offers a 3,330 milliamp hour battery. I didn't use any of the battery saving options that come packed on the OS, nor did I turn the display's brightness down at all. I tried really hard to drain the phone's battery, and found it lasted 12 hours after 8 hours of phone calls and some video games and web browsing using HSPA+, Wi-Fi, and Bluetooth enabled. I'd say those pretty impressive results considering the large display and fast processor. Alright, so let's talk about video and camera quality. I I love the camera on the original Note. I thought it took gorgeous photos, and of course, the instant gratification of viewing those photos and videos on the massive screen made the experience in that much more enjoyable. If you like the shots of the Galaxy S3, you won't be disappointed with the camera in the Note 2. By all accounts, technical specs haven't changed much on the cameras. Both feature an 8-megapixel sensor, LED flash, 1080p recording, and sport a 1.9-megapixel front-facing camera. I can't say I noticed any difference between the photos between the Note 2 and the S3, but the Note 2 packs a few extra bells and whistles. 
noticeably a bevy of new effects, enough to make a hipster blush and turn his back on Instagram, because Graham's just too mainstream now. So next, let's talk about the S Pen. People either love or hate the S Pen. I believe that depends on whether you actually use it. I used to carry around my iPad everywhere and take lots of notes with the stylus. So for me, I like the idea of combining the best of a phone and tablet and being able to take written notes. Samsung's S Pen received a whole new makeover and is less round and doesn't feel as cheap as it did before. It's gotten a bit more rectangular and it feels more number two pencil-like. I like the way it feels versus the previous Note. If that felt too small and delicate for you, you'll like the way the Note 2s feel. Samsung clearly invested a lot of resources into the S Pen. It's something that definitely stands apart from other phones. We run through some of the key features in our written review. Link's going to be down below to check those out. So one caveat, we are not able to get LTE working on our unlocked Galaxy Note, despite the fact that it does have support for AT&T's LTE bands. After several trips to the AT&T store and about 45 minutes on the phone with AT&T support, we were unable to get it resolved. So our speed tests were done using HSPA+. We did find those speeds up to be relatively consistent with other HSPA Plus speed tests in our area. All the carrier Galaxy Note 2, those that will ship on every major US carrier, will come with LTE working right out of the box. All right, so next let's talk about Wi-Fi. The Note 2 comes with a dual band Wi-Fi antenna that supports 802.11 A, B, G, and N on both 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz frequency bands. The phone always maintained a solid connection and didn't experience any Wi-Fi drops during my test. It's also important to note that the Note 2 comes with Bluetooth 4.0. Tried it out in my car and it worked pretty well. Bluetooth 4.0 enabled me to seamlessly stream music even from Pandora to my car. It was a much smoother experience than with the iPhone 5, but could be dependent on the car and not the actual phone. All right, next let's talk about about software, this guy's rocking Jelly Bean right out of the box. I'm really excited to see devices start rolling out with Jelly Bean installed. We talked about Jelly Bean's features, so I won't really go too deep into them. So a couple that I'll quickly note as my favorite are Google Voice Search and Google Now. Google Voice Search is the Android equivalent of Siri. Quite frankly, I like Apple Siri integration more than Google Voice Search. Still, I appreciate the UI and the less robotic sound of Google Search over Siri. I love Google Now's ability to foresee traffic delays, and I found that a really great personal assistant. We could really spend forever talking about the pros and cons for and against Siri and Google's own applications, but competition is great for these worthy competitors. I think these applications are still a few versions away from perfection, but as long as they keep getting better, I think we're all going to be pretty happy in a few years. S-Voice, however, seems like something Samsung should bring behind the barn and shoot. S-Voice does appear to be more accurate than on the gingerbread and ice cream sandwich versions of the Note. However, I do find it redundant to have a Google version of an app that does similar functions to Siri or Google Voice Search, but that falls very, very short. I prefer the purity of Android Jelly Bean. I think that most carriers and hardware manufacturers mess with the OS and add their own spin to it. The attention is, I'm sure, well intended, but execution, I find that features end up missing or totally botched. TouchWiz is definitely in the same category. I understand you get a few more morsels of features that Samsung adds to the devices, but Jelly Bean can stand on its own without any meddling developers. However, in this iteration, I do appreciate a few TouchWiz nuggets. The ability to easily view two apps at once is incredible, and I love that I can pop out a video for viewing on the home screen, and the experience is still extremely smooth. Blocking mode is one of Samsung's many additions to Jelly Bean. It appears in the Samsung Galaxy S3's Jelly Bean update, as well as the Note 2, and is essentially the same functionality as iOS 6's Do Not Disturb feature. Motorola's variation, called Smart Actions, definitely does this the best, as it learns what you do and records these privacy settings. Both iOS and Samsung's Touch Wizard versions require you to manually turn these settings on or off, which means it lacks the intelligent know-how of Smart Actions. So you can say what you want about hardware fragmentation across Android devices, but I feel developers have done a pretty awesome job integrating the Note 2's larger size. I was surprised to see how well apps filled the screen, especially considering that many of my iPhone 5 apps still require developers to update to newer dimensions. Jelly Bean was meant to help solve Google's fragmentation issues, and as I mentioned before, I found lagginess to be non-existent and was really happy with having the phone as my daily driver. So with a phone this big, the all-important pocket test is a must, especially for one that's 5.9 inches by 3.1 inches by 0.3 inches. I was asked several times by friends and family whether or not I thought the phablet is too big. I often responded by saying it's gorgeous and the photos and videos look really crisp, so it's perfect for media mavens. Plus, it's fast, the camera is great, and it really fits in my pocket just fine. And I really don't think it feels any different than when I keep an iPhone or Galaxy S3 in my jeans. So what's the conclusion on the Galaxy Note 2? This is probably one of the best phones I've ever had the pleasure of reviewing, and I wholeheartedly think this device is a step above any other phone on the market. Sure, it's big, and it looks like Flavor Flav should have it on a gold chain around his neck. Yeah, the price point's probably going to be high, but it's worth every cent. Samsung really created a great phone. I thought the original Note was a good to great phone, but felt the build quality was a little bit cheap. This iteration, while still made of plastic, 
sports the S3 build and design, but packs in a ton of power and more software tools. I think the advances of the S Pen and TouchWiz integration will probably get people to rethink their opinions of such a large display. With the phablet, you really do eliminate the need to carry around a phone and a tablet. The hardware beats anything else on the market, especially when it comes to the quad-core processor. So I give the Note 2 an extremely high but worthy 9 out of 10 and an editor's choice. I took a full point off for some odd TouchWiz features that were less than appealing, S voice, disjointed integration, and blocking mode being fairly unintuitive. Otherwise, the Samsung Galaxy Note 2 is a first-class phone and a highly recommended device. So for a full written review, be sure to check out our link down below.